Hi, this is Kelly from Pataka Kelly and Play Learn Talk, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate this articulation trials activity. This was a special request. I hope you find this super helpful, and if you enjoy this, please give it a like and share it with anyone else who is a boom card creator and would be interested in recreating something similar to this. So I want to go ahead and demonstrate the game to you quickly. This is for a speech therapy activity. It is 50 trials, so every time the student says a word or completes a task even, you would be able to drag a Christmas tree over and cover up all the numbers 1 through 50. Now I have built in an area where the student or the user can designate the accuracy of each production. I like this because it builds self-awareness. I've also built in a reset button and this is going to make it really user-friendly so that your user can, after they've done 50 trials, just easily reset it for a new student or to help that student keep going and get an extra 50 trials. Okay, um, So this is the boom card all done and set up in preview. We're going to go over to Keynote and we're going to recreate it here and then come back over to boom cards and program it all together okay so it should be a pretty quick and straightforward tutorial um, so let me go ahead and make this a little bit larger so you can see it I'm gonna move this over okay that looks like it's as large as it can go okay so here is the framework of our page I'm actually going to make this even bigger so that you can see it okay all right, so we have our title, we have our instructions. I have a black bar over here, which is gonna have my added features. But today I'm primarily showing you how you can get all 50 Christmas trees or whatever item you're using in straight, neat, orderly lines. When I first started doing these, um, I did not know about the tip I'm gonna show you right now, and I did them by hand. It took me forever, and it was a little bit frustrating because I couldn't get everything exactly how I wanted it. So I'm gonna show you an easy tip right now on how you can get them into straight, orderly lines and columns. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the table feature. Before I do that, I'm gonna point out in Keynote, my document size for the slide size is 14 by a thousand. If you're using PowerPoint or any other system, you're going to need to reference Boom cards on the Boom Learning platform and see what size your slide size should be. But in Keynote, it's 1400 by a thousand. So now I'm going to drag out that table and I want to designate that it has 10 columns because we want 50 articulation trials. And I want to make sure it has five rows, and it does. So I'm going to click on the table and go to Format because I want to get rid of these alternating row colors. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck that. And then I'm going to come over to Cell, and I want to use this as a guide for me. So I want to make sure that I can actually see those lines. Right now they're blue, they're invisible, so we need to give them a border. Okay, I'm going to change it to black. We are going to be deleting this later, so it could be any color you want it to be. This is just a tool to help you figure out where your Christmas trees are going to go. Now, if you are looking for Christmas trees like these, these are numbered actually 0 through 100. I'm just using 50, but they save you a lot of time because they're pre-numbered for you. I will link those in a comment below or in the description below where you can get those. Okay, so here is our grid. I'm going to make it a little larger, just about there, okay. Now I am stretching this across the whole entire slide size and I'm actually going to save it as an image, okay. And here I just did this to demonstrate what the page looks like, but the background image that we're going to be saving is actually just going to be this one right here. So we're going to save this as a JPEG background and this we're going to save as a PNG and I'm going to explain that in just a little bit so make sure you stay tuned for that portion. Okay so now we are ready to import our Christmas trees. I have actually put them on one page to save us time. Now I did this earlier. Um, I imported these to this page. The reason I'm not doing it right now is I had to click each individual one um, individually, right? So it took me quite a bit of time. So I wanted to save you some watch time, okay? Because I know your time is valuable. So, all right, I'm going to take this Christmas tree and I am going to size it down to make sure that it fits into one of these grid areas. And when I do that, because they're all grouped together, they're all going to size or resize at the same time. Okay, that is another tip that I did not know for a while that really saves you time. So number 50 is going to go all the way down here. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to move them off my screen. Actually, I'm going to put them here so you can see them. And then I'm going to ungroup them. 
Okay, and then this is going to be your most time consuming part. You're simply going to drag it down and place it in the center of that square. Okay, and it's okay if they overlap just a little bit. All right, so I'm just going to show you maybe a row, maybe even half the row. Okay, so once I get all of them out, then what I'm going to do is if I'm happy with how they're all aligned, I'm going to click on this table and I'm going to delete it. Okay, so that was only our guide. Now the very important thing you need to do right now is you need to come over, to, you need to click on your master slide here, and then you need to change the color to transparent. So you're going to adjust the opacity, bring it all the way down, and you're going to know it is transparent because it has a black and white um, box right here. Do you see at the bottom? Okay. Now you're going to think, oh my gosh, it's black. I don't want the page to be black. It's not black. It's actually transparent. That's just showing you that it's transparent. So you need to save this by going file, export to, and you're going to export it as an image, but make sure it is as a PNG. Okay. Now, because I have multiple pages here, I also need to be careful to specify which slide I want to export as a PNG. Okay. So I want it to be slide three. All right, so I would go ahead and export that. Now I want to export this as a JPEG, okay? I'm not gonna create this right now in this video with you, but I will point out the different parts to it. And if you would like to include that in your articulation trial card, I think that's wonderful because I think all the features are really helpful when you are doing articulation therapy. So here I have a black bar. I've simply grabbed a shape and I have stretched it across, okay? So I made it whatever size I wanted, stretched it across. I designated the color by coming over to style and then changing it to black, okay? I grabbed some rounded shapes like this one. I layered it on top, I changed it to white, okay? So I'm basically designating the area for different parts of my game, okay? And then I grabbed some text, text from up here, change the font. So I just position things in the order that I wanted. I have my logo in the top left corner because that's what I do with my games. And then down here, I just pulled out these shapes again and changed the color. All right, so I have correct, improving, incorrect, and a reset button. So now that this page would be done, I would do file export as JPEG. Okay, so that would be our background. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over to our boom cards and I'm gonna show you um, what it all looks like. Okay, so on the boom cards, I have it all um, already imported like this. So I'm going to show you the coding on this area over here. So let's go ahead and jump over there to this one right here. Okay, so here we are in the workstation. So I have imported my background, new cards from images. I grabbed it as a background. Okay. And then I simply layered this on top as an image. I was able to resize it down. You notice it has a border, but it is transparent. Okay, so now all I need to do is grab Christmas trees. I have um, grabbed the Christmas tree and layered a heart on top of it. And then I've come over to my template card, okay, and I've taken one of them, I made it draggable, and I put it in the position I wanted it to be on all my cards, okay? So the way I did that is I did it first on this card, okay, and then I brought it over to my template card and I did command C, command V, 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 V the whole time until I got to 50. I got a lot of errors up at the top saying it was too much on the card, but down here the card size, it seems to be okay. I'm not entirely sure what this means at this point yet. It seems to be a new feature still. Um, so if you know, leave a comment below, but everything seems to be working perfectly fine, okay. Um, I would hesitate from recommending to you to do a hundred trials. I don't think it's going to be possible um, to put a hundred on the page. Okay. So I think 50 is really your max. So here we need to go ahead and do the coding. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab a text box. Okay. I'm going to show you two ways today. I'm going to show you either using a multiple choice text box, which I'm currently doing a series on this. If you're interested, there is a playlist you can check out. I'll link it below, or you can use a text box. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on top like this and size it to the size of my button. And then I'm going to duplicate it and bring one down and I'm going to duplicate that one and also bring it down, okay? Now I am going to click on both of these by holding down command and clicking on both, and I'm gonna designate both of them as wrong, okay? And this is gonna help um, kind of just track data during the session, okay? Now it's gonna be used for each individual one. 
Okay, and then for correct, I'm gonna mark it as correct. All right, now this is not really a gradable resource whatsoever. It's really intended to be used during this session, okay? But in order for it to be clickable, I need to designate an answer option or else when I don't do that, let me actually show you. So when I don't do it, let's do this. So it's not marked as anything. Oh, no, it's still marked as correct. Okay, so let me actually see. Did it do it? Nope, still marked as correct. Um, let me delete it. Okay, so I'm just going to make it a text box. I just want you to be able to see in case you have not seen this before. Okay, so it's not marked as anything. When I preview it, I'm not going to have anything to click on. Okay, so I need to have it designated as something in order to be able to click on it. So I'm going to mark it as correct. Okay, so we have that option. And then as a reset button, we need to make sure we have a Flow Magic deck because we're going to create a reset button and it's kind of an illusion, right? Because we're gonna make it a next button. So we're gonna go delete the text and we're gonna link this to the next card, okay? Which at this moment in time is nothing. And then once this card is set up the way that we want, we are going to click on this card and go to clone the selected card and clone as many as we want. This saves us so much time, you have no idea, okay? So we do not have to recreate all the cards, it's done for us. So that is a way you can do it with text boxes. Now let me show you how you can do it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. Um, let me show you how you can do it with a um, let's see, oh, I'm going to clone it, we'll get rid of these boxes, how you can do it with a multiple choice text box. So you can drag it out like this, okay, and you want to change um, the columns to three. You're going to click on one, delete it, okay, and then we're going to actually move the whole thing over. Now I don't recommend doing this, I think it's more complicated, so we want to change it to flow, I believe. Let's see if flow changes it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We want it in grid, but we want the columns just to be one column, okay? And we want to have it overlap in this area, okay? But in order to do that, we need to make sure it's transparent. We're going to come over to background, and we're going to hit transparent, okay? Now we also want to click on our buttons and make them transparent. And, oops, let's see. We want to size it down to fit. Now it's not gonna fit perfectly because it has these borders, okay? And it has the text still. So we're gonna get rid of the text inside by double clicking it and deleting it. And then we want to get rid of the borders. We're gonna click on all three of them, okay? And then we're gonna go to border and we're going to say none so we have no borders, okay? And you'll see how they're overlapping here. And we have a red, a red, which is incorrect, incorrect, and then correct. Okay, so that is another way that you could do it. Um, either way works for you. It's just whatever is gonna, you know, be best for you. All right, so let's go ahead and check it out. If we click Oops. on correct, that says incorrect. Let's see. Oops. I think I have the colors mixed up. So that's okay. We're gonna go back and we're going to hit correct here. It says correct, incorrect, incorrect. I think it's randomized right now. So let's take it off randomize. It is, so we're just gonna unclick it. Okay, so I'm going to recommend not doing this. I think it adds an extra, um, you know, detail that might be confusing, and it's much easier just to do the text box, okay? I'm also going to get rid of that border on the outside of it so that we don't have it. All right, so let's go ahead and preview it. Okay, so this is the one with our, our multi-choice grid. So here we have correct, incorrect, incorrect, correct we cannot click on. Why is that? Let's see. Hmm... This one's correct. Okay, now let's try it. Okay, correct. And then we have incorrect, incorrect. There we go. And everything is movable. Okay, and then if we wanted to reset, we could. So let's go ahead and try the other one. This is the one with the text box, correct, incorrect, incorrect. These are all movable. And then reset. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, um, you know, go ahead and give it a like and share like I mentioned earlier. And if you are enjoying these tutorials, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I post daily videos for you. And I really want to see you succeed in creating these, um, you know, game-based learning activities for your students. All right, uh, wishing you the best and I will see you tomorrow in the next video. Bye, guys.